In this video, I'll show you the step-by-step -step method of converting this 2D image into a 3D printable file like this one. So, let's get started. All right, so here we have Rodin from Hyperhuman. Now, before we start with this, let me show you some user-generated content that we have here. So, these are all the 3D characters and objects generated by user using Rodin. And you can also download these if you want. For example, this car here, if you want to download it, this toy car, of course, you can select and that's going to show up here. You can change its visual style to see the geometry view. You can see it in wireframes and also in the PBR lighting and other visual styles. You can download in different formats. You can also use the base model geometry or you can create a high poly model just in case you want that. In this case, I don't want to use existing content. We'll create our own. So let's just go to the top. Now here we can use a simple seed image or you can also use text prompt to create an image. Let me show you both the methods. So the first method is obviously using an image. So I'll click here and let's upload an image here. So I'll maybe just select this Jeep here and click on generate. And by the way, this one is using cloud credits, not generating, but other options will use cloud credits. So you may need to get the subscription to get your hands on the cloud credit. Now, generating the models and redoing several tasks is free. So it will consume cloud credit only when you confirm your action. All right. So with that, let's see what we have here. So we have this 3D model immediately created using this seed image. Now, as you can see, it did a pretty good job of creating this model. And not just that, if you want to now refine it further, you can use these options here. For example, this one is a symmetric geometry. It automatically figured it out and it added sharp edges because it knew that this is an object, not a character. So sharp edges is, is there. But just in case you don't want it, you can uncheck and you can maybe select smooth edges. But I know the sharp edges is going to work well for this. Also, we have simple geometry not smooth edges here. Uh, if you want complex geometry, well, you can select this game ready. If you want to use it in your game, there we are. They've got the option or you can also select character if it's a character. Of course, it's not that. So I'll uncheck that complex geometry, smooth edges. No. And with these settings, it looks pretty good. Now, if you want to add maybe more text prompt and add details, then you can do it right here. It just generated this text prompt for this, uh, but you can, of, of course, add more details. In this case, I feel like what I've created is really good. But if you want more iterations of this, well, after making the changes, you can click redo and that will just create another model. All right. And here we are. We've got almost similar model here. If you want to see the history, that's right here. You can click the history and see all the models that you've generated. So if you don't like the one you've generated here, you can always roll back to the previous iteration. In this case, I think the current version is really looking good. So I'll leave it at that. And once you click on confirm, now it's going to create the final 3D model and it will consume the credits, the cloud credits. In this case, I'll just make sure that this hyper option is checked. Now this will take more time to create your model, but it will generate a better quality 3D model. So I'll just check this one. And if you want more polygons, you can just select that and click on confirm. Now is this object symmetrical? Of course it is. So I'll just select yes here and now it's generating it. And here we are. So we have got this 3D model. Now, once again, you can change its view just to see it in different styles. Now for the texture, we have this prompt here that looks pretty good. But again, if you want to add your own prompt, you can do it. You can add a seed image here again just to change its visual style. But I think with this, it looks pretty good. So I'll just click on this create. And that's again going to consume one credit. Essentially, whenever you are finalizing your settings, it's going to consume it. But before I do that, let me just show you these two options. So this one is just the PBR temperature, which will add details and highlights that are closer to the reality. So the more you move towards right towards 10, the better the results are. But in this case, I leave it at 7.5. Also, the reference strength option is essentially how close you want this 3D model to resemble the 2D image that you provided. So again, you can just play with the slider wherever you want it. Now, in this case, I'll just click on generate with the following settings. And it's now going to generate the materials. Now, these materials can be imported again into a 3D software like Blender. And uh, you can use these textures and materials for your 3D model. All right, it is done. So let's just confirm it and move to the next step. Here we are. So far, this is the result. Now, finally, the export settings. So if you want 
the base model settings you can check it or maybe just select high poly and stl if you want to 3d print it or maybe obj or other file formats if you want to use it in your game or elsewhere also here in the material finish while well, you can select shaded or just pbr i'll select pbr and the quality here i'll keep it at 1k and then i'll just download this so this will essentially download the stl file which we can now import in our 3d printer just to print this and the model is now downloaded so let's just see what we have inside this so here we have all the texture files and we have this high poly stl file so let me just open this in cura and here it is so our 3d model is ready for 3d printing Currently, its size is really big. If I check the scale, that's really 109 mm, 189, about 200 mm in Y axis. It's really, really long. So maybe I'll just make it 150. And now let's just slice it. Let's see how long it's going to take to just 3D print it. All right. So about 12 hours and 141 gram of PLA because PLA is what I've selected here in the default material. But I'm not going to 3D print it. And let's just use another 3D model here. So let's go back to this. I'll click outside and click OK just to cancel this out. And now let's create a fusion of these two models. So I'll just click on this plus icon and here I'll select this Jeep once again and then I'll select this ladybug. So let's just create something unique with the combination of these two. So I'll click on generate and I'll select fusion here. Now with this option selected, it will create a fusion, a blend of these two images and create something unique. And here we are. So we've got this. Now this is how it came up with but in this case you can control how much each image should influence this final 3d model and you can do it using this weight and direction option but before i do that let me just go to this gear icon right here and i'll enable it now after enabling you can actually first option is seed you can just create a new randomized seed number and that's going to again create a completely different kind of 3d model you can just click here to create a random number for this and then we have the second option now you can select the recon or the rest option the recon option is good for creating the image like result and the rest option is something that you should select if you want to remove any dynamic features for example this one is not a character so i think rest option should be good for this you can also select the strength of it and then we have the cfg which is how closely this image should match the model so this is basically the strength of this 3d model that is going to match with the seed image in this case you can just maybe move it a bit and then steps the higher the steps the better the result and with this step option it will create more sampling steps but i'll leave it at 50 and with these settings you can once again redo this so let's just try it and here we are we have got this again completely different thing now if you want to just change the weight or the influence of one image over another you can select these options here for example in this case the blue one is this jeep image and this one is the ladybug so how you want to influence these two well you can select it from these options so with these settings i think i'm pretty much satisfied with the results so i can just click confirm and again it's going to consume a cloud credit and you can select different results and you're done with that also you can see the history to just revert to any previous 3d model just in case you are not happy with the current results all right now let's see the last option which is creating 3d model using text input so i'll just click on text input and let's just create baby groot with sword in one hand all right that looks like a really good 3d model i guess so let's just click ok and here we have the result if you're not happy click regenerate and that's going to create another one this looks really good so i'll just keep it and click OK. Now, if you want to create more images, you can. But so with just one, I'll click on generate. So here again, all the steps are exactly the same. The results are right here. If you're happy with it, great. But of course, as you can see, it has so many imperfections which you can fix in a 3D modeling software like maybe Blender. You can just import it in Blender and fix it. Now, in this case, once again, it just did a pretty good job of finding that this thing has smooth edges. And also, if you go to this one here, it recognized that this one is a character. So it just applied all the required settings here. Now, I'll quickly convert it into the final result. So I'll just redo this because I've made some changes. And now I'll confirm these settings. And here is the result. Once again, you can see it in different visual styles, just in case you want. And 
I'll just click on generate with the default settings. All right, let's just confirm it. And the results are pretty good actually. And here also, let's just select STL, high poly, and I'll download it. All right, and here's the final result. So let's just open it in our 3D printer. So we already have a file with name high poly. Maybe I'll just rename it to high poly one, and then let's just import it in Cura, which I'm using for 3D printing. Now it's off to our 3D printer. So I'll just make a few tweaks here that is essentially required. The size is really big. Maybe I'll just make it smaller. So 189 along Z axis, that's really big. So I'll just make it 100. All right, that's a small one. All right, and most of the settings here are already good. So the only thing that I changed here is the support, which was off. So I'll just make it on because we have this overhang here. Of course, it needs support. So is this. So with these settings, I'll now click on slice and let's see how long it's going to take and how much material is required for this 3D printing. By the way, I'm using Adventurer 4 for printing this. It's going to take about four hours and 36 gram of material. So let's just save it on disk and now we will send it off to our 3D printer. All right, and here is the final 3D print. Now, after cleaning and everything, this looks pretty good. Maybe we can just use sanding to clean up these areas right here. And when cleaning the supports, I accidentally converted this sword into a knife, which is still good. I mean, Groot should not have that big of a sword in his hand. Uh, that's definitely a big hazard. So yeah, what I did is uh, pretty good for the safety of everyone. All right, so that's the final result now. All right, so before we wrap it up, let me show you some new features that were added recently to Rodin. Now, the first one is here, well, the bounding box control. So you can now create a bounding box to decide the general shape of the 3D model that you will be creating. Not just that, you can also create a voxel or point cloud to control the shape. Now, let me explain this quickly with the help of a bounding box first, and then I'll explain the different methods. So with the bounding box selected, you can either click here and select a model, or you can just handcraft a bounding box yourself. In this case, I'll handcraft it. So I'll click on handcraft, and that's going to create a 100 by 100 by 100 box. Now, if you want to change its shape or size, well, you can very easily do that. Maybe let's just change the shape here, and let's make length 200 and confirm. So this is the bounding box. Now, after that, of course, you can add a text input or you can add a seed image. So maybe I'll just add an image here and I'll be using this boat. All right, and then generate. So Rodin, it just ended up creating this 3D model, which looks very similar to what we have here in the image, but now we'll use the bounding box to change its shape. For example, here, I'll click on the bounding box option that's right here. And as you can see, the length is 200. Uh, maybe not length, I will increase the height to 200 and length, I'll maybe just make it back to 100 and then confirm it and redo this. And now with these new parameters, this is the board that we have. Now, of course, with this big height, it doesn't really make any sense. So I think we should just change it again. But now you got the idea that it's using that height to stretch it along that axis and make it kind of like that. So I'll just go back to the bounding box condition here. And for the height, let's just make it 100. And maybe we can add a width, a little bit of it. So maybe 150, confirm it and redo it. And here we are. So once again, as you can see, it just added that extra width to this boat. Now it's not as impressive as it was with the default condition. So I'll maybe just change it back to 100. But once again, if you want to maybe experiment it further, you can just try it along length as well. And here we are. So. We have this extra fin added, so you can just experiment with this to generate very different shapes. Not just that, if you're not satisfied with the result that this bonding box is creating, then you can also go to this voxel control and then create a voxel or this kind of blocky shape from your 3D model. Now, this will help you once again create a 3D model that resembles the seed voxel or the voxel that you've provided here. So here I'll just go to voxel control, click here. And once again, you can upload a model or you can just handcraft it. In this case, let's just upload a ready-made model. So I'll upload it and maybe I'll just upload a building. So I've already got this. I'll click on this building and here we are. So it just used that OBJ model and this is the general shape. It just converted that 3D model of a church and it converted it into this kind of voxel shape. Now I'll confirm it. And now we will create 
simple house that looks like this so i'll go to text input and i'll add simple house all right and here we are maybe if you want more iterations of this you can refresh it and this looks good so i'll just use this one click ok now rodden will simply combine these two results and create a model that's combination of these two so it will use this image and it will use this 3d shape to create the 3d model that we need so i'll click on generate and here we are so as you can see this big structure is not available here but it's using the voxel as reference for creating that and it's also resembling this 2d image so it's kind of a combination of these two the result that we are getting here but you can control how influenced it gets with this 3d model and that you can control here so click on this voxel and here you can see the scale and how strictly it's following so right now it's very strictly following this voxel but if you just want to you can decrease the scale and you can just make sure that it just follows it roughly by selecting this rough option so i'll click on confirm and now if i redo it it will create a completely new model that just looks like this so in this case it resembles more like this image and less like the 3d model but again there is a resemblance still now let's look at the third option which is point cloud and for point cloud well i'll go to this one and here again i'll upload it but just in case you want to know how handcrafting it works you can click on handcraft and then you can just use this sculpting environment to kind of make your own general shape that you want so you can use the sculpting tool or you can use these scale options to kind of stretch it deform it however you want and once you are satisfied with the result you can click on confirm and basically rodden will now use that shape as this point cloud and you can now add your 3d model here it will use that as reference of course i don't want that so i'll click ok here just to cancel it and now i'll upload a model so i'll click on upload and i'll upload maybe this groot all right and you already know this 3d model is created by rodden so i'm just uploading it now using this point cloud data i will now create another model that just resembles it so once again if you want to have more randomness you can just move the slider towards this to add more uncertainty or you can just leave it to the left also the sampling size you can change it i'll just leave it at 2048 the maximum here and then i'll confirm it and now you can add a new image or you can just add a text input so here i'll just type a man carrying sword all right a simple man carrying sword that just looks like this Groot all right I'll maybe regenerate it hmm, that looks better so maybe I'll use this one and now with the combination of this point cloud and this image it's going to create a completely new 3d model and here we are not exactly the way I would have expected it but still it ended up pretty good once again if you want to just change this then you can increase the uncertainty and then confirm it and redo it again it still doesn't look very good so the conclusion here is not every setting will work equally good and in some cases you may want to use just the bounding box then in some voxels and in some point cloud will just work well you just have to figure out which one works based on your model that you are currently using so with that i'll just cancel it out and that's about the new features of rodin so that was the step-by-step -step method of converting a 2D sketch or a drawing into 3D using generative AI powered by Rodin from Hyperhuman. Now, what you want us to cover in the next video, let me know in the comments down below. And I'll see you soon in the next one.